Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and today I have my laboratory notebook. I have my analytical balance to take some weights and today we're going to do some experiments with some snakes. So if you've been watching my videos, you know I have a scientific mind. I'm always trying to figure things out and I do have a couple questions about these snakes and it has to do with the size of the rodents and the weight gain of the snake. And of course, you've seen with some of my snakes in some of my previous videos that the more the more food you put into a snake, obviously the faster it'll grow and the bigger it gets. And some people say, well, how big does a snake get? And it really depends uh, partly on the genetics. Of course, a ball python will never reach the size of a reticulated python, but there's, there's certain uh, size ranges within a certain species. And I think that the, to reach the potential maximum size, you really need to put a lot of food into that animal. And I think a lot of people kind of moderate the amount of food they put in and they get uh, an average size snake. And the thing that I've always wondered about is, is if you feed one large rodent versus several smaller rodents, will you still get the same weight gain? And I've actually seen articles and some people suggesting on forums that if you, if you feed multiple small meals with the same amount of mass as the big meal, you'll still get a smaller weight gain which I thought was pretty interesting. So for example, you know, Lucy, my big snake, she's between 50 and 60 pounds, and I feed her like 10 rats to really beef her up. Well, if I switch to rabbits and say, for example, instead of 10 rats, I fed two, you know, big rabbits that equal the same amount of food as five rats at a time, uh, I'm thinking she might grow faster. And I'm kind of, I have, I have my hatchlings and my holdbacks here, and I really want to put that to the test. Let me show you what I got going on here. So I'm going to do an experiment. I have 12 holdbacks up here in these tubs, and these are all my, my snakes from last year. And these actually have grown quite a bit faster than my hatchlings that I'm going to sell at the shows because I've been feeding bigger meals. And <laughs> just look at how big this beautiful male pastel calico bamboo is and he's really doing really well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a little experiment here where I actually feed different snakes different amounts of food so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a weight of all my snakes and kinda get a baseline and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down all the snakes in my, in my little computation book there and, and match the weight with the snake and then every time I feed that snake I want to write down the weight of the rodent that I feed and then right before I feed the next time I'm going to weigh the snake again to see the, the weight gain between meals and I think the, the best time to weigh a snake to really get the baseline is right before you feed them again after a whole week after they kind of clear their system from the first rodent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these snakes, I'm going to weigh them all and to kind of, to kind of set it up I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my females the bigger rodents because if it, if it works the way I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking that the bigger rodents are going to have the same, have a bigger weight gain with a bigger meal versus several smaller meals. And then I have actually four males that are my holdbacks. And what I'll do is I'll actually take multiple rodents that equal the same weight is the bigger rodent for the females and I'll see if, if multiple smaller meals actually has the same weight gain or more weight gain or less weight gain than one big meal. Okay so I'm going to start with my male pinstripe bamboo and I'll get a quick weight on him here to see what he's coming in at and he's coming in at 370.5 grams. So next up is my male scaleless head 50% hit caramel albino and actually this snake I was going to sell it at one of the shows and I decided to hold it back so it's going to weigh just a little bit less it's coming in at 226.5 grams all right so this is my male calico bamboo and we'll see how much he weighs it's coming in at 283 so this is actually one of my very favorite snakes in my whole collection it's my male pastel calico bamboo and he's really got some really good weight on him I'm definitely thinking he's gonna be a good breeder next year 
He's at 424.3 grams. Okay, so those were my four males. And so for the males, I want to give them multiple smaller meals. And, and I really want to weigh the meals. So I'll weigh all the individual mice. I'm thinking I, I can give them weanlings and, and figure out how many weanlings are in the same size rodents that I feed the females. And I'm thinking I still have quite a few the adult, the adult jumbo mice that I can feed and I also have quite a few rats that are coming up to certain sizes. I have a lot of baby rats that I'm really bringing up because I have a lot of hatchlings and holdbacks that I'm feeding and so I'm trying to really boost my production. So I have to weigh the, the meals for, for the females and then figure out how many weanling mice will equal one of those and I'll feed that many mice <laughs> pretty much back to back and I might even have to spread it out over a couple days to equal the same amount of weight that I'm feeding the single meal meal and the females. So let me go through my females and we'll get weights on those. So here is a really reduced bamboo. It's uh, I'm thinking it's just a straight bamboo, but it's really reduced. I'm not sure if it has anything like an enchi in it or anything, but it just kind of popped out as really reduced. So I'm trying to breed it in a couple years and I'm gonna see if, if I can get some reduced bamboos out of it and maybe pop out an enchi, see what else is in there. And she's coming in at 368.9 grams. So here is a lemon blast scaleless head female and I'm really hoping to get some pierce totally scaleless lemon blasts when I actually breed that girl. And let's see what she's coming in at. She's coming in at 343.6 grams. So here's my other lemon blast scaleless head female and these guys are pretty much on par with each other. They're, they came out of the same clutch and they're pretty much exactly the same weight, 335.7 grams. Here's my pastel scaleless head female. Came out of the same clutch as those two lemon blasts. I really hit some really good odds when I produced these girls. And let's see what she's coming in at. 347.1 grams. So here's a unique normal that came out of my coral glow. She has some really interesting patterns and, and I think she's if you look at the belly tracks, I'm pretty sure she's head pied. My, it, she's her odds are 50% head pied, and the the extra white up the sides could be from the head pied, or it could be something else. This is just a female I kind of wanted to play around with, and if she is head pied, I could really get some nice pieds out of this girl. So let's see what she's coming in at. It looks like 293. 294 grams. Here's my female lesser bamboo. It has one copy of the lesser gene, one copy of the bamboo gene, and she has a little bit of yellow right down the middle of the back. Almost looks like a super fire in appearance. And let's see what she's coming in at. 344 0.8 grams. So here's a female scaleless head, 50% head caramel albino, and actually if I bred this with my male 50% head caramel albino scaleless head, if I get really lucky and hit the odds, I could get a totally scaleless caramel albino visual, which would be pretty incredible. I don't know if I'll hit the odds, but she's coming in at 292.3 grams. So this is my female pastel pinstripe bamboo. It's got some really interesting hieroglyphics down the top and the, and the sides. And she is coming in at 301.3 grams. So I actually have one more holdback and that is my female albino pied. And she's a really picky eater so she really hasn't been consistent so she is not going to be in this experiment. So that was the rundown on my 13 holdbacks. We're going to do an experiment on 12 of them. So we'll feed the males multiple meals and we'll feed the females just one large rodent that equals the same weight as the smaller meals. And we'll see if there's actually a difference. The other thing I'm really interested in is how much of the, the rodent weight they can convert into body mass. And I know snakes have a really high conversion when it comes to conversion of body mass into the weight of the snake. And it's, it's pretty incredible. They can go a really long time without food. And I think that's why, because when they eat a lot of rodents, they put on a lot of weight really fast, and they can use that weight as a reserve to fast for a really long time. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna track all the weights for all the rodents. I'm gonna feed all these snakes once a week, track all the weights, and I'll put it in a big spreadsheet and we'll, we'll see what the conversion rate is and we'll see if the bigger rodents actually 
put more weight on the, on the snakes versus multiple smaller rodents. And what I'll do is I'll carry this on for a couple months and then I'll give you an update and you'll see another video. It'll probably say snake experiment results and I'll give you the whole rundown of what's really going on and what the results are. And I think it'll be really interesting to see what it, what it turns out to be. Okay, so in a couple months I will have the results of this experiment and we'll see if the bigger rodent sizes really make a difference versus multiple smaller rodents and what the conversion rate is from the food to the weight of the snake. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.